Creating Accessible Documents in Microsoft Word 2010, Requirements to Make a Document Accessible. Accessibility of our Electronic and Information Resources, or EIR, is becoming more important as legislation, publicity, and outreach programs focus attention on making more resources available to people with disabilities, including employees and the public. Microsoft Word, for example, is commonly used both at the workplace and at home and is now providing more tools than ever to enhance accessibility. Unfortunately, a Make Accessible button does not exist on our computers, so it's necessary for us to know how to create accessible documents. Fortunately, a dedicated group of Texas State Agency employees collaborated to create a Productivity or Accessibility ribbon with useful features to help make Word documents more understandable. It's important to remember that Word is only a medium through which we communicate, so we should utilize these tools to be as clear and effective as possible. People with visual impairments frequently use assistive technologies to read a document. This is typically software that reads a computer screen out loud. These screen readers detect the structure and features of a document by looking at the document's underlying code. When the document is coded properly, it is accessible. There are seven requirements to make a Word document accessible related to document structure, figures, hyperlinks, lists, columns, color and contrast, and tables. The other modules in this course will explain these in more detail. First and most important, a document must have structure. You structure and organize the Word document by applying heading styles. Microsoft provides multiple levels of heading styles, with the highest and most important level listed as Heading 1. As heading levels decrease in importance, the heading number increases. Most documents use only three or four heading levels. You can think of document structure as an outline. Word lets you view the structure or outline using document navigation. When you look at the document map, notice that each descending level of heading style is indicated by an indentation to the right, similar to the appearance of an outline. The document map allows you to see the organization of the document and easily move through it by clicking on appropriate headers. A properly structured document also lets you create an automated table of contents with two simple clicks. If your document is edited after the table of contents is created, a single click on the Productivity ribbon will update it. Another requirement concerns figures. A figure can be a photograph, drawing, chart, graph, or other image. You will need to add alternate text, which is a brief description of the figure, and position the figure properly. The Figures module provides more details. Descriptive hyperlinks are important to accessibility. Use meaningful text for hyperlinks instead of the once common click here or for more information. Screen readers vocalize the document's hyperlink. Imagine the confusion when hearing this list of links. Click here, click here, click here. Use list styles when making lists. Microsoft offers a variety of list styles including bulleted, numbered or lettered, and paragraph. The Lists and Columns module provides more information. Create columns within the Columns tool. If you are not familiar with this feature, you may be tempted to create the appearance of columns by using the Tab key to format. Columns are meant to be read from top to bottom and left to right, like articles in a newspaper, and lists created with tabs do not work that way. Using the Columns tool ensures that screen readers can read the document properly. Plus, that makes it much easier to edit text within the columns. Color and contrast are important accessibility considerations. If you convey any information via color, you must also communicate it in another way. Many people are colorblind and may not be able to distinguish a color you use in a document. Good contrast is essential for many readers. Black and white is a good default combination, while red on black, for example, may be nearly invisible. Some useful websites and tools that determine acceptable color contrast combinations are discussed in the Colors and Contrast module. 
If your document includes tables, you must format them correctly to make them accessible. How to properly format a table is covered in the Tables module. We can note now, however, that screen readers cannot handle split or merge table cells. One final note about accessibility, avoid use of text boxes or paragraph frames in your documents. They are intended to direct attention to areas of text but are completely inaccessible to screen readers. Instead, try adding borders to a selected area of text. This concludes our overview of what is required to make a document accessible. We encourage you to watch the other modules in this series, Creating Accessible Documents in Word 2010.